First we're going to look at close list approach. We know that from the Rutherford uh, scattering experiment, the alpha particle, it gets fired at the atom and occasionally, occasionally there are some that get deflected through large angles, like this. Uh, we can find out what is the distance of closest approach, basically by knowing how much energy the alpha particle has as it approaches a gold nucleus, we can calculate how close it gets to it. So, the way we do this, the alpha particle travels from infinity with a kinetic energy, and let's say the potential energy at infinity is zero. The kinetic energy it loses, and it goes down to zero as it gets to its closest point, is equal to the gain in the potential energy. So the kinetic energy goes to zero, and the potential energy goes from zero up to the potential energy, which is kqq over r. And r will be the distance of closest approach. So you basically need to uh, equate those two values. Let's look at an example. The kinetic energy of another particle is 7.68 MeV. How close does it get to the gold nucleus? Let's say the charge of the gold nucleus is plus 79. We know that the kinetic energy goes to zero, and the potential energy goes from zero up to QQ, kqq over r. This change in kinetic energy is equal to 7.68 MeV times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. The change in potential energy will be 9 times 10 to the 9, which is K, times by Q. This is Q1. This is the charge of the uh, gold. This is the charge of the alpha particle. Remember, it's two protons divided by R. We rearrange this to get R, and we get a value of R to be approximately equal to 3 times 10 to the minus 14 meters. As, this is pretty much as close as it gets without with uh, scattering, the regular scattering. Now, let's have a look at um, what happens if it has more energy. If the alpha particle had more kinetic energy, some particles were actually absorbed or they didn't behave as well as they should do. There's a massive electrostatic repulsion as it comes near to the alpha particle, as it comes near to the nucleus. Um, but how can it possibly be absorbed in that case? Why is that? Now, you remember, of course, that inside the nucleus, there's a strong nuclear force, which is, at really, really short distances is much bigger than the electrostatic repulsion. So if the alpha particle comes so close that, it, that the strong nuclear force takes over, then it will stay. Now we have to introduce the, the Fermi radius, which is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15. This is the point where the force is basically going to be the greatest, and it's roughly equal to the size of a, 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 a proton or neutron. Now you need to find, for example, what is the, the radius of a, of a gold nucleus. If you know that the, uh, there are 200 particles, roughly, protons, neutrons, nucleons, in the nucleus, the atomic number is 79. If you find a ratio between the volumes, it's going to be roughly 200 because one nucleon compared to 200 nucleons. So if you find the ratio of these values, you get a value of the radius of gold nucleus to be around 7 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. In fact, if you use the formula that's in the data booklet, this is what you should use. R is the radius of the nucleus, R0 is the Fermi radius, and A is the atomic mass to the power of one-third. You can also find the density of the gold nu nucleus. The density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. These are the equations that are in the data booklet. We could fire electrons at the nucleus instead. Now, the electrons have the advantage is that the scattering will have to still take place because unlike the alpha particle, the electron, which is a lepton, is not affected by the strong nuclear force. It's a bit like firing electrons at a, through a gap. Having an obstacle is basically the, the, the same effect. So you get a diffraction effect because the electron is behaving like a, a wave. And they basically fire these electron beams at the metal 
and they detect at different angles what was happening with the scattering. They found there was a minimum at a certain angle and there's a basically relationship between the sine of that angle is equal to the, the wavelength of the electron divided by d and d is the nuclear diameter. So this is another way of finding the diameter of a nucleus by electron scattering. So let's say, let's do an example, the theta is uh, uh, equal to 60 degrees. Find the potential difference needed to measure a nucleus of size 1 times 10 to the minus 14 meters. What kind of voltage do you need to do that? d is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So you can find that wavelength is equal to 0 0.866 times 10 to the minus 14 from this uh, equation. Then if we know the wavelength, we need to find the momentum from de Broglie or de Broglie. From that, you find the energy in joules. Then you can find it in electron volts. And then you can find the potential difference.